Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Orbs La D from Annette Van Dam. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. And yes, indeed, if a song just popped into your head, yes, that is part of the inspiration. And so while I'm on that, uh, I will have in the description section my step out and then look at the For More Inspiration, the link underneath there, to Annex blog where she explains, um, you know, how this came to be. So with that, we'll get started. Now, it can be done in two ways, and I'll, de figure, I'll demonstrate both of them. This starts off with a, well, I'm going to start it one way. It, you can do it wavy or angular. And in my step out, I kind of mimicked what uh, Anek did in hers because I thought it was a great idea as a way to explain. So I'm just going to start at this side here with a wavy line, like so. And then what you would do is mirror that. So at these 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 points here, you would um, they would be meeting. So the tricky part is estimating where you would be in that curve coming into it. And then, as I see, I already did it, um, not having it go sideways. You know, let me try it this way. Maybe that's it. Maybe because I was doing it on an angle, I wasn't seeing it. So, hey, let's try. We'll, we'll learn together. Or it's also called ah, being going a little bit slow and careful. Oh, like so. All right, so we'll just do three rows like this. On and on the, the bottom side, gonna we're... Um, Let's see, do I want to do it now? Let's, no, you know, let me finish this, and then I can do the other side. Okay. Because that way, if for some reason I groove something up, or you miss something, then uh, we're going to cover it twice, so that's good. The next step is we're going to fill with orbs. And what you want to do is start in the highest, at the highest section. This one is interesting, but it's all right. All right, and then, you know, we're, we're filling in kind of from top to bottom, with orbs. Now you can decide if you I, if you want to do them more oval shape, which I think that lends itself a little bit better if they are more oval shape. I'm I know in my step out I was struggling to make them oval shape, um, but if you want to make them a little bit more rounded, then you you know either either way it, it's all up to you. So kind of going carefully, and one of the things that I like to do. Again, besides starting in the middle and working out uh, to both sides. And she kind of puts that in her, into her step outs. And she says, you know, turn 180 degrees like, you know, like this. And then you can come around the other side. Whatever way works for you. Um, one thing that I do like to do to make sure that I'm at least getting these butted up next to each other is I will start on this line. And then, you know, then come up, go down. And that way I can, for the most part, make sure I'm, I'm hitting that line. But whichever way works, but putting them in the middle first, so that way you can go, okay, there's my high point, and then you can, then working to either side versus, and that's, that um, would be uh, with the idea that yours are symmetrical, not like this. <laughs> Because that way, again, you're hitting that, that top point. Now, if you do end up with something like this, um, you know, you could have it go crooked or, uh, you know, I'm just going to, you know, pick this as the, as the high point, you know, and we'll just, we'll just make do like so. It's not too bad. Oops. And then I went over. Oh, well. That's the thing about going slow. And you know what? It is a little bit easier, especially if you're doing like this where you're, if you're, when I'm drawing on that line, it is a bit easier to flip the tile or your paper, whatever you're working on. And then for these partials, what I would do is maybe start, you know, here, with, okay, here's the biggest section. You just kind of have to decide what, um, you know, where that is in, uh, oh, I have to do the top too. Yeah, so you just decide where that is within your orbs. I do like to save them for last. Now, so the, these ones, what I kind of do, because, I mean, th this would, well, oh, wait, 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 let's see. Let's um, have this meet up here, because that's an awful big gap. 
and then it would probably just so it looks right okay so then yeah that one's gonna just run off a little bit who knew there was so much to to putting some orbs into something right <laughs> It's all strategy. All right. Oh, and see, and then like here, I'll just put a, a big a starting ones because that's what those would be. And then here, I will have the big one. And then that's probably going to be a small and small. Like I said, you just have to visualize where this would be in you know, the overall look. Now, you can do, a, a, you know, you could make this a fill-in if you want. You know, so it, it could be a border, or it could be, like I said, you could fill in an entire section if you want. I'm thinking this is, if that's not an orbit, it should be. And then what I'm doing is we're going to fill in the little gaps And then what I think I also might do, we'll do, um, I think for the other side, because I think you can, you can understand, but you know what it's nice to see. So what I may do is just uh, do the whole pause trick and do it that way. You don't necessarily have to watch me. I'll get it started or something. Um, and that way you don't have to suffer through it. You could just be tangling and, um. Or if you're just watching and then you're going to tangle later, that, that you know that's some of my intention with these, is that you are um, watching. Maybe you're tangling along and then hitting pause, but not where you have to like uh, be hitting. You know, you know, stop and go back, stop and go back, uh, type of thing. I tried to. That's why I, that's why I called them quickies, <laughs> so that way they would be quick. So you are see, you see. You know, I think, oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do half of this, just finishing that. And then I'll finish the rest up in a moment when I hit pause. But so you get the idea. So we're going to fill in the gaps and then we'll do some shading. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to shave the, save the shading till the end. Okay, so now if you wanted to do this angular, then, and we'll do it the same way, you know, it's just kind of like a, a wide zigzag. And, of course, it's, you know, however you want however you want them to look then uh working you know backwards let's see let's do it from here and then well let's try this but so i don't so i make sure because you want to line up those high points and then and with it being angular it's going to be a little bit more visible than when it's like this and i'm gonna just guess that that would go there Okay, so one, two, oh, for good measure, because I did three before. Let's do that here as well. And then just always alternating the direction you're going. Like so. Yeah, those kind of line up. And what's neat about this is that, well, and we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll do like we did here, um, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. And if it's not, then it ends up looking whimsical, and that has a magic all on its own. But once we get the shading in, and you see once, well, actually, you know, here's what we can do. And I think this is what uh, Annette did on her step out, was just like, well, let's just do this whole one side all at once. And, uh, and then flip and do, you know, the last little bits. And so you'll also see on her, so that one's going to be just like that. Okay, and we'll do the partial here. You'll see on hers, she has the really nice um, kind of oval shapes. And if you get things nice and kind of even, well, we'll see how this one ends up once I get the once we get the shading in. But it really has a neat effect. It was one of those where I thought, hmm, after seeing kind of after the seeing how it's done, I was kind of like, well. Hmm, that's interesting and um, you know hopefully I'll be able to replicate it and it did pretty well and usually it's it's when you get to the shading part and then <laughs> well I know for me anyway I can only speak for me once I get to the shading part then it's like wow 
And if you've been watching any of my videos, you know that already. <laughs> so I'm just always amazed. It's like, oh, it turned out. And, um, you know, and what's fun about that is not worrying about, in the process of doing this, not worrying about how things are going to come out, how things are going to look, just focusing on the one thing at a time. You know, so I'm just focusing on making these or these orbs be a bit on the ovaly shape. And uh, just focusing in on that and then that's it. And this does work really nice to, you know, just do the one side and then and then the other. Okay, and then this one is all going to be, let's see, this would be... That one's going to be... Well, it's not going to really matter. They're just, I'm just going to put these like this. And that'll work. All right, so let me hit pause. And I'm going to finish the fill-in. And so if you are tangling along with me, then you can finish yours as well. And, and hit pause. And then when we're when you're done, I'll be done at the same time. And it'll be amazing. So, all right, be right back. All right, I cut back a bit early, just a smidge, because I realized something that seems really weird, but it, was, it actually started to help me. So, um... In the filling in, I was just, you know, filling in the blank space, but, you know, with, because we have this line that we drew initially, it was, uh, confusing is the right word, but, but kind of, what I found was if I was just focused in on, so you can see right here, so I left, I left this, this little bit empty, um, let me just touch those in, okay, but if I've just focused in on filling in the section you know, uh, here, let me just do this. So I'm following that initial line and I'm not going over it. I'm just not even focusing on it. I'm focusing on this one right here and just getting the little triangles in because I was finding, I was just like, uh, being not sure if I was filling in the wrong parts. And then see that I'm left, you know, doing, it's the same thing just up here. So I just wanted to share that because like I said, I thought of like, going, well, that's really weird that that would help, but Hey, I'll take it. That's, you know, so I, so I took it and I wanted to share it. Um, so if you find yourself kind of getting lost in, in all of that, um, and, or worrying that, Oh, I might go into a place that I don't want to be, then, um, just give that a try and see if that helps. And so what, what ends up happening is we have this really neat pattern. Now, of course, like I, I, I like this one a little bit better because this one went a little wonky and then can, it continued to be a little wonky. And then oh, that's, and let me also fill it. So you can do a little course correction right with the pen uh, if need be because I end up, if I'm going too fast, I end up with these what I call little tags, look like little pigtails or whatever in between. And so you can kind of neaten things up a little bit if need be with your pen. The only caveat is that, you know, you can only go in because we're, you know, you can't go the other way. Um, and there we have it. Or you just, like, at some point, it's just like, I'm not going to worry about it because this one looks whimsical and this one looks neatly patterned. And um, so for shading, lots of ways. And, my you know, um, I'm tempted to do a little gem or something in these. And so, of course, you can do that. And if, you, uh, if you've seen those and you think that they're a little too... Too difficult. Um, I do have a video video on it. Heather's or yeah, gems. Heather's way. <laughs> just because I've I've seen so many complicated things, and I just want I wanted to be able to I wanted to be able to play too. So I I found a way that seemed to work for me, and it seems like it's also worked for other people. At least get you started, and then you know up to your creativity to have, you know, have even more fun with, um, you know, like adding, adding colors and, you know, doing other shapes and stuff like that. So what I'm doing here is I've just added some graphite to the one side and I'll probably do that down here as well. I mean, you could do it, but you know, like it depends on how big it is, you know, all the way around or something. You could even, I'm not doing that on this one, but you could, um, you know, do something here and then, you know, do something different. So it's like if you did say all the way around here and then you could do this one on the left side, this one's put a little shade on the right. It's, it's up to you. 
um, normally in Zentangle, we're not necessarily concerned with light source, so we're not we're not putting too much pressure on ourselves um, on the shading. We just want it to pop and look cool, and that's that's what ends up happening. And so it's not to say that you don't have to worry about it, but if uh, you know you're like me and the you know have the whole non-artist thing going on where I mean or I I'm I start to feel a little bit more comfortable I start to understand how this works a little bit more um, because it always had kind of escaped me and now that I understand where it's like oh okay well then you can play so I don't I didn't want to feel have anyone feel like they are prohibited from doing anything because this is entangled we you know there are let's see that one I didn't put any on um and depending on when on what you're doing so if you're using it for meditation and mindfulness you know it's like we, we don't worry about getting too fancy because then it takes away from that process um, a little bit it's just to keep it simple just like you know adding colors and all of that kind of stuff I'm only well actually in some of the samples I've I'm I've used color I had somebody ask on a class oh well why don't I see you use color and I was like well you know I have this thing about when I'm uh, teaching something I, I want to have it I guess it would be the pure thing not not get extra fancy I guess so isn't it interesting it added a bit of depth it's like, and I probably could go darker on some you know like right here and that and this is the thing where I do like to start maybe a little light and then feel like you can always go back and add some more later. But isn't that neat how it adds some depth? And then when I turn it this way, look at how cool that that looks just just by turning uh, turning it and having it going on a different angle. So just really neat. And I love how you can see you know th that original line sort of um, without even trying. It's just I I, I was thinking I'm like oh that is just not going to show up. And lo and behold it did. And even where it's a little wonky, it still came out good. So, um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I just thought it was a really neat looking tangle, um, with the multi-use of either using it as a border or, you know, filling in a section or whatever you want to use it for. It's just a really, really neat concept. It's similar to in a pod. And I know I have a video on that one, um, just with doing the orbs. Um, it, it's similar to that, but I really, really thought that this was, um, just a, uh, just a really cool tangle. So... If you enjoyed it and um, would love to have a thumbs up, if you are not subscribed and liked it enough to see more, would love to have you uh, be a subscriber to the channel. Um, just click the subscription button and then also make sure to click the notification bell so you can let YouTube know how you want to be notified, if you want to be notified at all. And um, again, uh, step out to information in the description section as well as ways to connect with me if you um, so if you've enjoyed this and would like to join uh, in a live session I do uh, a combination of paid and free classes um, and all of the information is on my website just uh, you know, find the link that says classes and there are ways that you can follow me I like use Eventbrite and Meetup as well as Facebook and we all speaking of Facebook we have a really nice Facebook um, it's the Tangle Addicts community um, where we just share the stuff that we've done and um, and it's just it's a really really nice community so if you would like some you know more tangle resources feel free to join us and uh, would love to love to have you on there and with that thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I wish you happy tangling